Some men call it progress Down with those who doubt To join the causes others join And shout when others shout Come, you're a man, no passive stone Stand up and call your soul your own Go on alone, go on alone Vanish weakness, go on alone Go on alone, go on alone Don't look back, just go on alone Some men call it freedom New democracy To shun the heights and cloud the depths and court security. Come, you're a man, no passive stone. Stand up and call your soul your own. Go on alone, go on alone. Vanish weakness, go on alone. Go on alone, go on alone. Don't look back, just go on alone. Cowards see but pride in sing. Clarity. Oh, never mind if men are wrong, so long as they agree. Come, you're a man, no passive stone. Stand up and call your soul your own. Go on alone, go on alone. Banish weakness, go on alone. Go on alone, go on alone. Don't look back, just go on alone. Claim the power within you, error to defy. The world may change or disappear, but truth can never die. Come, you're a man, no passive sin. Stand up and call your soul your own. Go on alone, go on alone. Banish weakness, go on alone. Go on alone. Go on alone, don't look back, just go on alone. One of the most important things on the spiritual path is attitude. First of all, that which we put out. Secondly, it's the fruit of whatever good meditations we have. If we feel peace in our meditation, and aren't able to translate that peace into our daily life. In other words, if the practice of meditation doesn't really make us more forgiving, doesn't really make us more understanding, if it's something purely private and internal, then we haven't really achieved the reality that we are seeking. As uh, I've often quoted a saying of Sister Ganamata's, your religion is tested in the cold light of day. This attitude is the fruit of right meditation. It's also the groundwork of right meditation. It's without right attitude, we can't really begin to grow spiritually. One thing, that, for example, that Yogananda said was that you can't expect to please God if you can't win the love of your fellow man. Some people think that, that uh, 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 they have a wonderful relationship with the infinite, but somehow they can't get it together with anybody outside. It's almost as if this were their excuse. It's absolutely essential to understand that the basic attitudes that are required to find God have their definite counterpart on a human plane. In other words, the self, what is it that makes a person really uh, attractive to other people? It's I'm not talking of, well, he's a, a wonderful singer, or he's handsome, or he's uh, got tremendous magnetism for success, or something like that. I'm talking of basic things that everybody feels. You will always feel more attracted to somebody who's thinking of your welfare more than just thinking of himself all the time. If you're with somebody who, every chance he gets, he starts talking of himself and his interests, and doesn't even listen to you, then obviously he's not going to have nearly the kind of magnetism that somebody will have who is able to forget himself and really concentrate on you while he's with you. 
And that's not that different from what we have to do with God. Those people who in meditation are thinking, God, what are you going to give me? God, what am I getting out of this? God, why haven't I gotten the experiences I'm looking for? And so on. Aren't going to be nearly as in, in rapport with the consciousness that it takes to enter uh, the divine, the infinite consciousness, as those people who are thinking, God, how can I please you? What can I do for you? I'd like to begin on this topic of am I making spiritual progress with a reading from the Raja Yoga book, <clears throat> Swamiji's words. God comes to the soul in different ways as light or sound or love or peace or intense calmness or power or wisdom or divine joy. One who sees lights may have visions of saints or angels or of the astral world. One who hears sounds may hear astral music or the sounds of the spinal centers. One who feels love may find tears flowing inadvertently in meditation. One who feels peace will feel as though he were drinking it in pure life-giving draughts. One who feels calmness, the positive aspect of peace may feel his consciousness expanding as if into a vast hall. One who feels divine power will be made intensely aware that God alone is the doer. That man's own power is simply non-existent. One who experiences wisdom may develop deep insight into any question he asks of God, or he may know himself inwardly as the undying self. And one who experiences divine joy will never want for anything else. Never compare yourself with another, lest you fall into either discouragement or pride. Don't even dwell too much on the signs as I've described them here. I have only scratched the surface. God who is infinite can come to the soul in an infinity of ways as exquisite smells, as a thousand sweet tastes crushed into one, as divine instruction, as the purest divine merriment, as the tenderest imaginable forgiveness. Each soul's relationship with the infinite is unique. Compare yourself, not with others, but only with your own self. Do you love God more now than you used to? Are you developing even-mindedness? Are you more inwardly contented and joyful or at least happy? Are you renouncing self-will? Do you want to serve and please only God? If your answer to these questions is yes, and if you can add to your answer the wish to grow daily in these sublime virtues, know that God and Guru must be well pleased with you. Offer yourself into their arms. They will bear you surely and swiftly to the divine shores. <clears throat> How beautiful this is. And I think all of us wonder, are we making progress? We feel like we're trying and trying. Maybe we feel like we're not getting anywhere. Um, karma seems to still be there. Wrong attitudes, maybe wrong behaviors. Uh, maybe our meditation isn't as deep as we think it should be. We're wondering if we'll ever really go into the light at the spiritual eye or into OM or lift the energy up the spine or go into Samadhi. These are all questions I'm sure that cross our minds, but we are progressing. We have to know it and it takes time. Like planting seeds, you don't go out and get, take the plants, take the seeds out of the soil and keep looking at them or talking to them saying, are you growing? Are you growing? We leave the seeds in the earth and we keep watering. We take the weeds out. Um, as I was at Ananda village, I saw them planting tulips 
for the springtime at Ananda. And the ground got frozen and it was rain and wind and everything. But the seed, the seed, the bulb was still there and it was growing. You don't see growth all the time, but we have to know that it's there. If you look at your old photographs or uh, think how you were before you came on the path, the attitudes you had, the, the way you behaved, the lack of energy or whatever, you, I'm sure you'll see that there was growth. There was uh, one time Deviji said, Swamiji was talking about people who had grown on the path. And she said, I don't really think I grew much, Swamiji. He says, what are you saying? You're a completely different person. And if you think about it, you probably are a completely different person. And, and um, we grow from surely our own efforts. 25% is our effort, 25% master's blessings and help. Master said, I'll give you lots of my good karma so that you can get there. And that it takes very, very, very good karma to even want to know God. We have that very, very, very good karma. We have to use it in this life. And then 50% is God's grace. And Swamiji said too that we try and try, but we're just really lifting our cup up to God's grace. Really it's grace, the grace of God that changes us. We can't change ourselves. We can make the best effort we can and keep trying and keep trying. Just like uh, someone, a runner, a marathon runner, he practices, runs, does, goes further and further and further until he makes it. Or a musician um, who practices and practices and then you can play beautifully. It doesn't come overnight. I played the violin and I remember my poor family, oh no, she's bringing the violin home again. She's practicing again, but you have to keep practicing. And a good singer, Swamiji, uh, he took singing lessons from someone and he said after six notes, I mean, six months, the teacher said that note, that's how you should be singing. He said six months, it took him to sing one note right. And so we need to be patient and humble and keep working at it and have faith. Everything Master said in Autobiography of a Yogi, it's the truth. He lived it. He saw those masters. He lived with them. He outlined our path. He's given us everything we need, all the tools. He said, if you do one one hundredth of what I've given you, you can get there. And so you have to have willingness, will, determination, sticking to it, not going from one path to another, one guru to another, and not being faint hearted. Have deep faith. The gurus know what they're talking about and do your part without fail. So I want to go into just a few, like Swamiji said, there are so many ways that God can come to you, but I'll just go over just a few ways that you might see that you've made spiritual progress. One is a very important one, less self-involvement, less self-thought, less self-importance. It's big, it's all ego. I am this, I'm that. Swamiji asked master, have I been your disciple for thousands of years? And Master said, all I'll say is it's been a long time. They leave for fame, name. And Swamiji thought he must have said those two because I must have had that. And once Swamiji was, um, he was at a conference and someone came up to him. They were chatting and they said, well, what is your name? And he said, uh, my name is Swami Kriyananda. Oh, but you're famous. <laughs> the person said, he said, well, I don't know about that, but why do you say, but? She said, well, most famous people seem important. 
And Swamiji never seemed important. If you're comfortable in yourself, you don't care. It's not, oh, they give me the best seat. They have to call me such and such a person, Sri, 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 or whatever it is. And I love this. Swamiji said is when people touch my feet, I feel they're blessing me. It's not like I'm giving them. So less importance of self. And it's something to work towards. Put yourself last. Try to get out of that self by serving, by helping others, by thinking of others, by giving to others. Anytime you feel like you're getting your less expansive and more just shrinking, just find something to do for somebody else. And you can break it. But you can't want name, fame, people to look after you, want you. He didn't look after me well enough. They didn't take good care of me. Oh, just get out of it. And you'll find there's such freedom and just leaving it all to God and gurus and not and, and getting out of the ego. The second is less pulls, outer pulls from the world. There are a lot of them out there and more inner pulls toward God. What a beautiful one that you don't feel to go do all the social things you used to do or go to all the malls you can make it to or go out to, I know no one goes to rock concerts or whatever, but things that are socially, they pull your energy outward and downward. You just feel you don't want that energy anymore. There is a, a draw to meditate, med, meditation, meditating more. There's a draw to chanting, kirtan, coming to satsangs, coming online. There's a draw to service, uh, Kriyaban retreat that's coming up. There's a draw to seclusion, to silence. These are surely signs of going deeper because you just don't have the outer pull towards the senses, not nearly as much. The energy is being withdrawn within. And next one, attitudinal and behavior changes. Maybe there's, there's more centeredness in yourself for sure. So there's less worries because you're centered in the self. There's less being fearful. There's less emotional outbursts, anger, uh, things, emotions like that. And there's more uh, feeling of compassion, of love, of a joyful feeling, happiness, uh, attitudes of service, other ways that you can, you feel expansive, you feel kindness, helpfulness to others. And I remember Swamiji said to Master, I came to you, as he said just now, um, in a way, I came to you, Master, for what I can give you, not for what I'm getting back. And so the, the shift from the things that are important to you, to service, uh, to giving to other people. And uh, finally, more feeling. I mean, this could go on and on, but this is not time, but more of a deep feeling of God's in your life, Guru's in your life, Guru's presence, God's hand in the things that happen in your life. Maybe circumstances change from your prayers, from your devotion. Uh, your life becomes more in attunement with God. You feel a joy in your heart, no matter what happens. If, if people blame you, people love you, whatever, there's, you know inside that no one can take that joy away from you. That's the joy and love of God. Um, and I want to close with this uh, beautiful reading from Autobiography of a Yogi. Then we'll have some questions. This was from Master when, after Swami Sri Teswaraji gave him the experience of Samadhi. So Master felt he still hadn't found God. So this, this was the conversation. 
One day I took a problem to master. I want to know, sir, when shall I find God? You have found him. Oh, no, sir, I don't think so, master said. My guru was smiling. I am sure you aren't expecting a venerable personage adorning a throne in some antiseptic corner of the cosmos. I see, however, that you are imagining that the possession of miraculous powers is knowledge of God. One might have the whole universe and find the Lord elusive still. Spiritual advancement is not measured by one's outward powers, but only by the depth of his bliss in meditation. Ever new joy is God. He is inexhaustible. As you continue your meditations during the years, he will beguile you with an infinite ingenuity. Ever new joy is evidence of his existence, convincing to our very atoms. Also in meditation, one finds his instant guidance, his adequate response to every difficulty. I see, Guruji, you have solved my problem, I smiled gratefully. I do realize now that I have found God. For whenever the joy of meditation has returned subconsciously during my active hours, I have been subtly directed to adopt the right course in everything even in the details. I'll ask Natendra to join us, join me now on the screen. Thank you, Danaji. I'll just share the list of questions. The first question, Danaji, is sometimes I feel I'm making progress and then karma comes up and I feel I'm going backwards or at least not progressing. So what should I do in those situations? I think it's in the seeming. It seems, isn't it? And that's in your own mind. Let's face it. That's a delusion. You can engage in that delusion and just keep thinking, I'm not making progress. But you've heard everything Master said, Swamiji said. And we know we're making progress. And I think there's also a force that tries to hypnotize you and tell you you aren't. Is your path really working? Does meditation work? Does Kriya Yoga work? Why don't you try something else? And so don't entertain it. Just know. The one you should be asking is, Master, are you pleased? Guru's pleased? What does it matter? And so, and don't look every day for a flower to pop up from the ground. It's not going to pop. It may not pop up for a long time, but you just keep going. You just have faith. And I can say over decades of being on the path that things went up sometimes, sometimes they went down, sometimes they kept went up, sometimes, but I knew I was heading in the right direction. That's the important thing. Is your direction up or down, generally? And if the direction is generally up, everybody has karma they're working on. This happened, that happened, health problems, finance problems, relationship problems. So what? It's your own karma. But you keep going, you keep faith, you keep practicing Kriya. That's the one thing. Don't stop your practice. My God, if you stop the practice, you're just out there alone without any help. If you let go of master and say, well, he's not helping me, so I'll just go with somebody else. Remember that story of the woman who she saw, she, had a, she told master she had another guru who could dematerialize himself and materialize on another hillside. And, and she said, I want to go with him. This is what happens. I hear it from people. They're not that, but other ones. And master said, all right, that's fine. She left. Swamiji said in a year, she came back and she was a completely different person. I've heard it many times. People, they don't know what they have. And then they leave it and you come back and 
master would weep sometimes when people came back and they just were completely different people. And he said, I told you not to go. That one man, he said, if you leave now, it's going to be 200 lifetimes before you get back to this point in your spiritual growth. And he left. Wow. Shocking. So we don't know what we have. We have the aura of our Babaji, Lahiri Mahashayaji, Swami Sri Tesraji, Jesus, Krishna, Master, they're all behind us, pushing us through. But if you say, no, I had enough now, I meditated long enough and nothing happened. Well, think again. You want to come back a gazillion lifetimes more? Maybe without this line of masters? My God. Don't let go of what you have. And I think finally on that answer, don't think so much about it. Why are you thinking about it? I'm thinking, I'm thinking, am I making, I'm thinking. And instead of thinking, do something. <laughs> That's what I would say. Don't think about it. Get in your meditation room. Get out to the center and serve. Find ways that you can help other people. If you're sitting home thinking, are you making spiritual progress? That's not right. Get up and do something. <laughs> then you'll find you are. I know sometimes, and people have told me, you can be serving, serving, serving all day till exhaustion, really. And you come home and you sit to meditate and you have the best, best meditation you had in months. I'm sure that's happened with you, Natendra, too, isn't it? And you wonder, how did this happen? I thought I was exhausted. Grace. Grace. You can only do so much yourself anyway. Let that grace pour into you. Next. Yeah, Damaji, we have two more questions. <clears throat> the next is, after taking Kriya, I thought everything would go much better. But lots of karma came up and so did difficulties. So why is that? Is Kriya creating more karma? Yeah, I've heard that question a lot. You, it's your own karma. Kriya is helping you to get out of the karma. And rather look at it like, wow, now I'm strong enough to deal with the karma rather than, oh my God, there's more karma. And I think also you don't really see the karma if you're not that aware. Most people aren't that aware until they get on the spiritual path. Then they start seeing, oh, this is what I need to change. Oh, this is difficult. or this is a problem. And Kriya is not creating the karma. The karma was there and it's helping you to get rid of it. But your progress is accelerating. So maybe more is coming up at different times. A lot of karma comes up. Master said karmic bombs come up. But is he not there to help you get through it? I've certainly seen the bombs, but I didn't run away. Maybe I wanted to run away. <laughs> but where are you going to run? Where can you go? Your karma's running after you. You can try to run. You have to deal with the karma. So as you do, I would say, instead of thinking Kriya's bringing it up, why don't you do more Kriya? Do more Kriya. Energize. Make sure. Some people don't energize. The karma is going to hit you and knock you down. Some people never do Mahamudra. They don't do the practices. And they say, karma, karma, it's my karma. What? <laughs> I mean, do something about it. You got to be like Arjuna. Get strong in yourself. The path is not for weaklings, Master said. It's for warriors. And you can't fight all your battles at once. Just do what you can. But you do fight one battle, then you go to the next one. And like Swamiji sung, the problems are ever there. You get rid of one and you face this friend. Isn't it true? The friends are just waiting in line because it makes you strong and you get rid of the karma. And you're, you want to find God or not. You, it's like a baby, you know, saying, mommy, mommy, I don't want to go to school. I don't want, what do you say? Okay, don't go to school. No, oh, you say, get up, get your clothes on, get that P2 bag and put it on, <laughs> get on the bus. <laughs> so uh, master's not going to baby you. And Swamiji said outright uh, disaster wasn't the word he used, but something like that he used. Master would take away from you. But if, if you needed to grow from something, he said, you got to deal with it. So see the karma is coming from the guru. That's the best way. Then you don't say, 
It's not my karma. That's his karma. No, master gave you a nice gift. There it is wrapped up just for you. And if you deal with it, it's gone. Thank you, Dhaniji. Um, just related to that baby part, there's another live question. <clears throat> How do I get rid of lethargy to do a particular job? Energize twice a day. Do more Mahamudra. Get out and exercise. Don't eat so many sweets and uh, fatty, oily, heavy fried foods. Uh, surf more. Um, affirmations are good. Uh, maybe, huh, here's another one. Get off the social media all day, every day. Turn off the television. I mean, the list is long. Turn off the movies. No? All of these things will help you. Do more yoga postures, you know? And then one day, have a day that's your own. It's not a working day. You're not racing. You have uh, the time to do more, more of all these things. You have the time to rest your body. Make sure you get enough sleep. And uh, maybe do a fast. There's the three-day orange juice fast, which some of us are about to do. There's the nine day cleanse cleanse your body there's a lot you can do don't do them all at once do something though and just try to keep your body really master said keep it fit for self-realization don't let your body fall apart and not your mind either yeah thank you Nancy. one last question we're out of time but just if you have any thoughts yeah I feel like I've made progress in some areas, but not in others. Just. So sometimes it feels discouraging. Any advice on that? Don't be discouraged. I mean, gee. Discouragement only lowers the energy. Discouragement makes you... Uh, I'm going to tell you what it does. You go into a negative vortex and it you you buy into the dark force. Isn't it so? Discouragement. You can't do it. Don't even try. That's what discouragement is. And that's that's a satanic force. The masters say you can do it. Swamiji said, say yes to life. Get up and go. And so if you can't fight all the battles, you can't do it anyway. Do one at a time. One thing, work on that. And then get something else. I just, instead of making it mental, just ask master, what do you want me to work on? Let him tell you, you need to work on don't be, not being angry or you need to work on not being fearful. Let him tell you instead of, okay, I got a long list here and it's, this list is going to last me 50,000 lifetimes. <laughs> Just say, master, what do you want me to work on? And let him, and then say, and help me. I want to do it, but help me. That's the best way. Keep turning it to the guru. Why do we have a guru? Nobody ever calls on the guru. Call on the guru for help. You can get out of anything and make deep spiritual progress. Thank you, everybody. God bless. Thank you, Natendra. Bye-bye.